Happy Palo Ben Caro Day to all. We're going to talk more about Palo on tomorrow's episode of Locked On Magic for obvious reasons. Today, though, is about you, the fans, and the energy that you brought to the Amway Center. What went right? What went wrong? For the Orlando Magic at home. We'll get to that on today's episode of Locked On Magic. You are Locked On Magic, your daily Orlando Magic podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You are indeed locked on magic. Today is April 25th, 2023. My name is Philip Ross Reich. I'm the expert and site editor over at OrlandoMagicDaily.com. You can follow me on Twitter at PhilipRR underscore OMD. On today's episode of Locked On Magic, we're going to continue our season recap. We're coming near to the end of it. We've done most of them. I think this is perhaps the last one I'll do. Maybe there's one more uh, in the offing before we start getting into player pre- pre- profiles or player, out, player uh, evaluations, but... Today, we're going to talk about the Orlando Magic's performance at the Amway Center, why that was important in building their base, and why they still left plenty of games on the board. We're going to get to that coming up here in just a moment. But first, we want to thank you again for making Locked On Magic part of your day every day, no matter when you listen to us, whether it's first thing in the morning, whether it's right when we upload. We truly appreciate you making Locked On Magic part of your day every day. Remember, this great Locked On podcast covering every single team in the NBA to search for Locked On and the team you're looking for. The Locked On Podcast Network, it's your team every day day. Today's podcast is also brought to you by GameTime. Download the GameTime app, create an account, and use code LOCKEDONNBA for $20 off your first purchase. Last minute tickets, lowest price, guaranteed. Any, any young team will tell you that where they gain their confidence and where they get the most, uh, uh, where they get the most kind of support and and push comes from playing on the home court. I am not always the biggest believer that home court home court matters, especially later in the playoffs. I, I I think that when you're a really good team, you can play on the road. But for a young developing team, playing at home is a meaningful thing. One of the big goals for the Orlando Magic this year was to establish their home court, establish the Amway Center as a tough place to play. You've got all the bells and whistles, not just the Amway Center, one of the best arenas, at least facilities-wise, for players in the league. But now you have the Aven Health Training Center as well to help everyone feel comfortable, to help everyone get into their routine, to help everybody do the things that they need to do to win. All you need to do is get the wins on the home floor. And as Magic fans have shown repeatedly and showed this year as well, that... If you win, if you give these fans a product that they can be proud of, that they can be excited about, they're going to show up. They're not just going to show up. They're going to make noise. They are going to be there for you. And look, I, I think I, I think I, we named it a player of the week uh, 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 at the end of the season, and I really did mean it. Magic fans showed up this year. Like, I am really, really proud of Magic fans who bought into this team because they were rewarded so much, rewarded so much for what this team was able to do all season long. They came and they sold out opening night against the Boston Celtics. And yes, there were a lot of Celtics fans in that building, but they all wanted to see the number one pick. And, and no doubt, Paolo Bancaro drove a lot of this curiosity, just like he's driven a lot of the hope surrounding this franchise. But the fans kept showing up you know, selling out a Saturday game against Sacramento Kings. Um, the Kings were not who they are today. The, the game that most impresses me was when there are like five to 6,000 people listed attendants who showed up for a 5.30 weekday tip-off against the Dallas Mavericks when there was a hurricane coming the next day. I still have the photo on my phone because I was the last reporter that left the building. It was gusty and rainy when I left. Uh, saying, everyone evacuate the building immediately. I was like, eh, I'm, I'm going to write here because if I go home, I'm not going to get anything done. I'm going to be watching the storm. That game to me really made me believe, okay, there's something different about the fan base this year. 
And whether it was that game, whether it was selling out a late season Sunday game against the Detroit Pistons, whether it was selling out both games against the Miami Heat and starting to shout down those traveling Heat fans, and the way the Magic silenced a lot of opposing fan bases who typically make themselves comfortable in the Amway Center or have made themselves comfortable in the Amway Center over the last 10 years, the fans showed up. So credit to you, I want to get that out of the way first. The, the Magic fans are really bought into this group. But they bought it, but it's a chicken and an egg problem. <laughs> They're bought into this group because of the future that they see, but ultimately because the magic delivered at home. So many big home wins over the course of the year. Beating Golden State, beating Boston and Jonathan Isaac's return, beating Dallas, beating Phoenix in back-to-back games uh, with the hurricane in the middle, um, beating the Knicks late in the season. There were a lot of, the 50-point 50 50 point quarter against the Atlanta Hawks, the buzzer beater against the Detroit Pistons, there were a lot of moments on the home floor that helped this team, helped give fans like reward for following and believing in this team. That, to me, is exactly what a young team is supposed to do. If a young team wants fans to get behind them and believe in their future, they got to reward them on the home floor. And that's what the Magic did repeatedly throughout this season. At the end of the day, the Magic do finish 20-21. and 21. Um, I know that was something that I was really harping on, that getting a home record should matter. To, getting a winning home record should matter to this team. You know, when they faced the Cleveland Cavaliers, that last home game, already eliminated from the playoffs, I, I, I really thought they were going to go for it. I really thought they were going to give the home fans one last big hurrah before they begin shutting some some players down, you know maybe a few players sit out that game, but I really thought that that was going to be a, a marker uh, of success that they were going to go for to say like okay, we made significant progress. But considering where this team was, considering they won 22 games last year to go 20 and 21 at the Amway Center, shows that they really began to establish their home court not just as a place for their fans, but also a place that's going to be difficult to play in, but also a place that would be trouble in the future. And, and I suspect that the Magic will be, do, you know, maybe not dominance is the right word, but obviously, if you're a young team trying to make the playoffs for the first time, taking care of your home court is a big deal. And the Magic largely did that this season. The Magic largely took care of their home floor. They made it a tough place to play, They made it a place where they played some of their best games. They made it a place where they felt like they were going to win more often than not. Yes, there were some hard times. There were some bad homestands. There was the uh, one in three homestand late in the season uh, before the Magic went on that West Coast trip that they could not afford to lose some of the games if they lost. And we're going to get to some of those coming up in just a moment. But overall, fans who came to the Amway Center left excited and hopeful for this team's future. And that's what young teams are supposed to do. Unfortunately, young teams also do something else that gets quite annoying. We're going to talk about the games the Magic dropped that they shouldn't coming up here in just a moment. But first, it's time for a quick word from our friends at game time. There it is. We all want to go see the big game. Sometimes we forget that it's coming. Sometimes we find out about that big event, that big concert, late. And we need our ticket to the game. And obviously going into into sometimes a game, trying trying to get tickets, can be a hassle. But buying tickets to your favorite event shouldn't be stressful. Game time is the fast and easiest way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater near you with killer deals on last minute tickets especially and their best price guarantee. You can stop stressing over the tickets and start getting hyped for the fun you'll have at the event. Game time helps out with flash deals and last minute tickets. So if you have that spur of the moment decision to go to that concert, that play, that anything, game time can take care of you. Game time is the place for last minute ticket deals. Forget planning months in advance. Game time has deals on tickets right up to the day of of the event. Get exclusive flash deals on tickets for football, basketball, baseball, concerts, comedy, theater, and a whole lot more. The game time guarantee means you'll always get the best price. If you buy tickets in the same section and row for less, game time will credit you 110% for the difference. 
Snag the tickets without the stress with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NBA for twenty dollars off your first order. Again, terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code Locked On NBA for twenty dollars off. Downtown. Download the Game Time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Today's podcast also brought to you by our friends at FanDuel. Grand slams, no hitters, double plays, whatever the Rays are doing are back. And there's no better place to get in on the MLB action than FanDuel, America's number one sports book. That's because right now, new customers can step up to the plate with a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. Just go to FanDuel.com slash LockedOn, sign up, place your first bet, and get up to $1,000 back in bonus bets if you don't win. So don't miss your chance to get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000 when you join FanDuel today. Just go to FanDuel.com slash LockedOn to sign up. FanDuel, an official partner of Major League Baseball. I want to obviously start by thanking my everyday listeners. We really appreciate you guys listening every day. I know sometimes my uh, release times can be a little inconsistent. I either go overnight or, or, or around 10, 30, 11 o'clock in, in the afternoon. So I appreciate everyone who sticks with me and makes it a point to listen to Locked On Magic every day. Today's episode is what we in the business call a filler episode, or I, I don't know, uh, uh, at least a TV. That's what they would call it because tomorrow's episode is the big one. It's Paolo Bancaro Day, so tomorrow we're going to talk all about Paolo, about your expected to be most likely presumptive Rookie of the Year. I'll go ahead and say reigning, defending, undisputed Rookie of the Year. That's my Paul Heyman. That's my, I'll do that in my best Paul Heyman voice tomorrow. Um, Paolo Bancaro will talk all about him winning Rookie of the Year, which he is most likely to do. Um, I, I, I think I'm pretty safe saying that. We'll talk about Paolo Bancaro, celebrate his season, and why he changed everything for the Orlando Magic. We'll get to that on tomorrow's episode of Locked On Magic. But continuing on then, young teams win at home. That's where they establish their base. That's where they're most comfortable. That's where they figure out who they are. Um, And so next year, we're going to talk about the Magic's Amway Center record a lot. We're going to talk about how they perform on their home floor because that's going to be the base for the rest of the playoff dream to grow. Um, I believe home records were down this year uh, compared to previous years, but you look across the entire league, the best teams dominate at home. They do not lose on their home floor. And that's going to be something that the Magic are going to have to do uh, next year to, to continue the growth and continue the steps that they've taken uh, as, as a franchise and as a team. But undoubtedly something else young teams do, something that frustrates fans to no end, that just makes fans angry, sometimes irrationally angry. Young teams lose games they shouldn't lose. And when you're a Magic team that finished uh, eventually six games out of the postseason chase, but ultimately, but but really in reality, they were three games out uh, for, for much of the latter half of the season. They, they just couldn't get over that hump, get that last win they needed to get closer to climb over Indiana, climb over Washington, and put themselves in a position to chase down Chica- Chicago. Um, you know, there's just a Formula One race where they just could not make up the gap. Uh, the Magic dropped a lot of games that they shouldn't have dropped. Whether it was early in the season when they were dealing with injuries, when they lost uh, to Detroit, uh, when they lost to Houston, when they lost to Charlotte, there are a lot of games on the schedule, and it's it's like this every year, so it's it's not so unusual. But there were a lot of games, especially early on in the year when the Magic were five and twenty, that the Magic dropped that they shouldn't have dropped. There are a lot of games through the course of the season that the Magic dropped that shouldn't have dropped. You know, the the loss at San Antonio. Again, no offense to San Antonio. They made the plays. They made the shots. They deserved to win that game. The Magic certainly did not play well in that game. But that's the kind of loss you can't have if you're trying to make the playoffs. And I think I said that at the time. You can go back in the archives. I know I wrote that, that, you know, this this team just doesn't have the poise to actually make a a serious playoff push. And and that loss was kind of proof that they they weren't ready. They weren't at that level. Now, Every team is going to have games where they lose their focus a little bit. 82 games is a long time. It's hard to keep that focus. It's hard to keep that mentality completely in check the entire season. No team is going to get away from a season without a couple of what feels like bad losses. The Golden State Warriors would probably say their losses to Orlando the last three years have been bad losses. They haven't won in Amway Center in four or five years now. Um, it's... It, 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 that kind of stuff eats at you a little bit, especially when the, your margins between home court advantage, making the playoffs, missing the playoffs, when those margins are really small, 
those losses hurt, especially especially for a team like the Magic that had so much ground to me. Losing to Detroit, even on the second night of a back to back, and and really costing themselves uh, two two more wins because of the suspension suspensions that came out of it, that hurts. You know, losing a home game to Indiana with a chance to pass them in the standings. I think if the Magic would have won that game against Indiana, it was a Saturday in January or February. If the Magic had, would have, I think it was February. If the Magic would have won that game, I think they would have made a real push. I think that would have been a huge confidence boost. And instead, they got blown out in that game. They got really beat up, and it was just like, we know this team is better. We know this team can do can can play better, but they just they don't always have the verve, and they don't always have that ability to push themselves uh, to that next level. Again, every team's going to have these losses to point to, but for young teams especially, wondering if the team's going to bring the right focus to every opponent to treat each of these 82 opportunities, each of these 82 games, with the same reverence and respect is a real issue. As much as everyone wants to, wants to try and pretend that it isn't, these guys are human. We look at the schedule, you know, we see San Antonio, we say, that's a win. You know, we look at some of these games against weaker opponents, we say, that should be a win. That should be a win. We see it. I'm sure the players do too. The players know, there's, know where they sit in the standings as, as well. That, knowing how to handle that, you know, is certainly a difficult thing and something that young teams have to learn. It takes time to figure that stuff out. It takes time to, to, to know how to respect your opponent and how to worry about yourself and not really care who you're playing against in, in some respects. And again, this is, these are some of the growing pains that young teams go through. On top of that, the Magic had a lot of losses as well that were just frustrating and puzzling as, as, as to how they finish a game. You know, losing the big lead to Sacramento early in the season. You know, eventually losing on a buzzer beating three after a wild comeback in overtime, but that was a game, you know, that was a turning point game for Sacramento. I don't think Sacramento has the season that they've had without kind of the confidence that that, that the, the trip to Florida gave them. They beat Miami, I think, for their first win uh, the night before, or the day, a couple days before coming to Orlando. They came to Orlando, won on that buzzer beating three, and the rest is history. I think that was a huge turning point for the season. You could, t- you could ask Matt George of Locked on Kings after the season uh, how, you know, whether that game was, but it, it certainly felt like that to me. Um, you had the big loss to Miami where you blew, that, blew the big lead and lost in overtime. Credit to the Magic, a month later, the same thing happened, and they rallied and won the game in overtime. That showed a lot of maturity and poise, and, and I think the Magic do deserve credit for that. Um, you had plenty of games where the Magic just gave up a boatload of threes. Uh, Houston, San Antonio, Sacramento, all set franchise records for three-pointers made in a game against this Magic team. A Magic team, by the way, that finished sixth in defensive rating from December 7th until the end of the season. So it's not like the Magic were a poor defense. Three-point shooting was just a huge weakness for them, and they got burned by it a couple times. And again, when, it, when the margins are so small, those losses hurt. Those losses can be really, really, really painful. And a lot of those losses just kind of dotted the entire, entire season. And look, you don't want to excuse it with youth, but youth is a big factor in a lot of these. Youth is a big reason why the Magic lost some of these games, why the Magic were in these positions, why the Magic uh, didn't always click and and, and mesh and and meld together the way that they needed to to win games. That happens, and that's okay. What what matters is that you learn from it, that it doesn't happen again. And again, the Miami game is a great example of how the Magic came through that and and found ways to learn and grow. Uh, You know, they played better against Houston the second time with a great 12-point comeback late in the game that that saved that game, that pulled that game out of nowhere. Uh, they, you know, they 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 will learn from a lot of these experiences. But obviously in the moment and obviously when you're in a playoff chase, the only thing that matters in the result is the result. It doesn't matter if you win by one. It doesn't matter if you win by 100. All you need to do is get wins. That's the only thing that's going to matter in the standings to get you to the playoffs. When you get to the playoffs how you play and the process you go by playing and how you solve puzzles and figure things out maybe matters a little bit more, but even there, it doesn't matter how much you win by, you just have to scratch out one more point than your opponent. That's 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 what it comes down to. And ultimately, that's one of the big lessons that the Magic have to take from the season is every game is important. 
doesn't matter if it's in November, doesn't matter if it's in April, doesn't matter who it's against. Every game is going to matter because the Magic did have three games that they could have won and flipped things around to put themselves in position to play to the end of the season. The Magic had six games for sure that we can point to and say, Magic should have had that one. And, and look, every team's going to have nights like that. It happens in the NBA. These, these are the best players in the world. Sometimes there's very little you can do. But there's also opportunities for this team to get a whole lot better. We're going to talk about the postseason. Some great playoff action last night. We're going to talk about that man, Jimmy. Uh, we'll get we'll get to that coming up here. Plus, our daily lottery spin as we get ready for the NBA draft lottery here in a few weeks' time. Almost like three weeks three weeks away from it now. So we're we're getting we're getting there. But first, when my copy loads, I'll be able to tell you what we're going to talk about next. But first, a quick word from our friends at Prize Picks. There we go. Price Picks is offering a, a fantastic offer right now, the $1 million daily super flex promotion. Every day of the NBA playoffs and finals, one Price Picks user will win a chance at becoming a millionaire. One entry placed after 8 a.m. Eastern time will be randomly selected each day. Whoever placed that entry will be given a six pick flex with the following payouts. If you get all six right, you win a million dollars. If you get five of the six right, $80,000. If you get four out of six right, $16,000. You can find full details at prizepicks.com slash million, you must opt in at this link to be eligible for the million dollar entry. Once you opt in, all you have to do is play the game like normal and you could be the lucky winner. So how do you play Prize Picks? Well, glad you asked because Prize Picks is daily fantasy done the right way. All you do is pick two to six players and if they go on to score more or less than their Prize Picks projection, you can win up to 25 times your money on any entry. What if, what, if you believe that Nikola Jokic is about to drop another triple-double, you can, you can say that he's going to do that uh, based on the prize picks projections. There's no competing against other people, so you're not scrounging to get your money back against these sharks who know what they're doing and flood the pools with multiple entries. It's just you versus projections. It's all about you and your skill. Prize picks offers projections on any sport that you watch, including NBA, MLB, NHL, PGA, and a whole lot more. Entries can be made in 60 seconds or less. It's really that easy. They offer safe and fast withdrawals, and they're currently operational in more than 30 states, including here in Florida, as well as Canada. Download the PrizePix app or go to prizepix.com to sign up and play daily fantasy sports. First-time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match of up to $100 with promo code Locked On. If you deposit $100, PrizePix will give you $100. If you deposit $50, PrizePix will give you $50. Don't forget to enter promo code Locked On and sign up for an instant deposit match of up to $100. Another busy night of action in the NBA last night. Uh, just two really just fun, entertaining games. Um, games that I think show something that's really, really important uh, for the Orlando Magic. Um, you know, we're, we're talking about the playoffs because, you know, uh, Jeff Waltman, I think he said that he either said this uh, at exit interviews or, or told Mike Miyake this on his radio show on 96.9 The Game here in Orlando. Uh, success leaves clues. And I'm a big believer in that we're going to do playoff lessons. We're going to talk about teams as they get eliminated and what their seasons, what their eliminations from the playoffs tell us about, about how the Magic can build and rebuild uh, as a team and, and, and put themselves in those postseason positions. Um, it's, it, you learn a lot from these, from these teams. You learn a lot from what these teams are, are doing. Uh, and so, and so, you know, the lesson from Sunday, the lesson from Monday, Monday night is stars really matter. Like Giannis being back lifted the box and, and he, he played a really good game. Did not look, you know, he's carrying that team on his back and it did not look like he was showing any worse for the wear. Jimmy Butler just, Jimmy Butler had one of the most incredible performances and there is just a thing in these playoff games. If you want to win the playoffs at a high level, if you want to be an eight seed upsetting a one, if you want to be a conference finalist, if you want to be a champion, you need a player that on some nights you just cannot stop. The great tragedy in Magic history is that the Magic had one of these guys in Tracy McGrady. And he by himself, granted in a league that was very ISO heavy, but he by himself put the Magic in the playoffs three times. And honestly, if, if the Magic would have done a halfway decent job of putting a team around him, if Grant Hill would have been healthy for just one of those seasons, 
the Magic are probably getting out of the first round. They're probably going deep in a very watered-down Eastern Conference. No offense to Milwaukee, you know, that Boston team with Antoine Walker and Paul Pierce. Uh, the Nets, obviously, uh, with Jason Kidd. Like, that Magic team with just T-Mac and Grant Hill could have very easily competed in the league. And then, obviously, T-Mac just had too much to carry. Uh, but he he kept the Magic alive uh, in, in several series where they had no business being alive just because he was individually great. Shaq and Penny were unstoppable players. Dwight Howard was a guy you could not stop. And in fact, eventually, the way teams beat the Magic in the playoffs, the way the Hawks beat the Magic in 2011, was they were like, they got no one who can attack off the dribble outside of Dwight. So we're, we're not going to let, we're not going to double him. We're going to let him get his because he can't carry this team by himself. And in that series, look, the Magic lost that series in six games. The Hawks were the better team. In that series, it was late game baskets from a really late game basket from Jamal Crawford in game four. A late basket, a, a late push in game six. Magic won game five in a blowout, won game two in a blowout. Game one was a blowout in, in Atlanta's favor. Game three, I think, was also decided on, on a close on, uh, in a close game. It wasn't like the Hawks ran away from the Magic. Dwight Howard kept the Magic in that game. And Orlando, just, again, the, 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 the running problem in Orlando history, since T-Mac left, the Magic did not have a perimeter attacker. Why did Hito Turkoglu click so much? Because he could attack off the dribble and no one really knew how to handle him. Uh, you know, that's what they hoped Vince Carter could do. He couldn't do that, and that's why that Magic team flamed out. The Magic are still kind of looking for that, but, you know, Paolo Bancaro is hopefully going to be a guy that could be this kind of a score. That could be a, he can get you 40 on a night. Or, you know, this is a must-win game. Paolo's going to up his scoring. He's going to be more focused, more determined, and some nights he's just going to get hot. We didn't, you know, like one thing that I kind of wanted to see from Paolo this rookie year that, that we didn't quite see, like we saw a couple 30-point games, but I wanted to see him get have just a night where he has 40, where he just, where he just says, F it, I'm going to get 40. And, we, and there are hints that he might do that on a few nights, but it, it never really came fully into focus. Um, you know, it's not that you need someone to score 56, you know, every night or, 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 or be able to score 56 like Butler did on Monday night, but you need a guy that could, that could threaten with 50, that could flirt with 50. Uh, to, to be one of these elite teams. And, you know, look at every single team uh, in, in in the playoffs that matters. Giannis put the 50-burger up in Game 6 of the Finals. You know, Jimmy Butler can score 50. Donovan Mitchell's had a 70-point game. Joel Embiid can drop 50 like that because he's so efficient. You know, Trey Young can score 50. Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown can score 50. John Morant, LeBron, Anthony Davis. I'm literally just going down my list. Steph Curry, you know, Klay Thompson if he gets hot. Paul George, Kawhi Leonard can score at will. Devin Booker, Kevin Durant. Uh, Chris Ball when he was younger, certainly probably not today. Um, even Cat, Jamal Murray, having a guy that can just ignite and have a big game, that stuff matters. And that's why the Heat are up 3 1. That's why the Lakers are up 3 1, because LeBron also had that kind of a game, uh, you know, even, even just dominating other aspects of the game. You just need, you got to have someone that can dominate games. That stuff matters. So, to that point, let's do our daily lottery spin. Nothing crazy in today's lottery spin. Utah gets the first pick, Indiana second, Detroit third, Portland fourth. So Orlando sits, drops down to eight, as well as picking 11th uh, in, in this draft scenario. With Houston, San Antonio, Charlotte ahead of them, that probably still leaves them with Grady Dick. I, I would imagine Portland and Houston would take the Thompson twins. Uh, I'm not sure who else would, t- uh, I'm trying to think. You know, Jairus Walker might be a good fit in Charlotte to replace what Miles Bridges does. San Antonio might be the little bit of a wild card, but... You know they could take a guy like Cam Whitmore, get some get some backward backward help. So you know I, again, I, I know my big thing. I'm repeating myself a lot because a lot of these lottery results are going to be the same. The Magic are going to draft seventh and eleventh. That's their most likely landing spot uh, on lottery day. So just be prepared for that. Um, I think that the Magic, again, my big thing for the Magic is come out with a shooter. Whether that's Grady Dick, whether that's Keontae George, whether that's whether that's uh, Jordan Hawkins, who I'm, I'm, I'm increasingly liking a lot more the more I watch him, um, come out of this draft with a shooter. Uh, again, and that doesn't necessarily have to be in the draft. Like, you could trade for one. To me, shooting, you know, any guard that you add has to be a shooter. Like, I, I honestly, I, I think I mentioned this yesterday, I'm a little worried about taking the Thompson twins because they are not great shooters. You know, I, I think Asar is a better sh- is a better shooter and a little bit further developed offensively. 
But I do think the Magic, when they look at this draft, need to start thinking about the here and now. They can't be so focused on the future and so about the so about the great beyond that they don't take care of themselves now. And I think that that's still like one of the big thi- that's that that's the big thing I think that this Magic team is going to be going through and thinking about. Obviously, we'll keep doing these lottery spins, keep talking a little bit about some of these prospects before we dive a little bit deeper into them uh, in the coming weeks. But that's going to do it for me today. I want to thank you all again for listening to today's episode of Locked on Magic. Of course, find me on, uh, you can find me on Twitter at R underscore OMD. Subscribe to the podcast and Apple Podcasts that you're tuning in. Hit my Google Play, Spotify, Odyssey, and all the fun places on the podcast to your podcast enable listening device. For the latest on the Orlando Magic, be sure to check out orlandomagicdaily.com. You can find us up there on Twitter at O Magic Daily. We want to thank you again for listening to Locked On Magic. If you're one of my everydayers, appreciate you listening to the podcast every day. I want to wish all of you especially, but everyone, a happy Paolo Day. On tomorrow's episode of Locked On Magic, we're going to talk about Paolo Bancaro winning Rookie of the Year. I, I feel pretty safe saying that here at 11 a.m. on on Tuesday. Paolo Bancaro is going to be the Rookie of the Year. We're eight hours away from that being official, um, but I, I, I'm ready to hand him the crown and hand him the title belt. Um, that that big beautiful gold belt that Triple H uh, presented. I'll, I'll just give that to Paolo because because that's 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 what he deserves. Um, we'll talk all about Paolo's season and how he changed the Orlando Magic on tomorrow's episode of Locked On Magic. But until then, for Orlando Magic Daily and Locked On Magic, this has been Philip Rossman. We'll see you all again next time for another episode of Locked On Magic.